What's going on, Shrew Gang? My name is Cam Darper. We're having a great day. In today's video, I'll be doing an update on BlackBerry ticker symbol BB. I'm going to go over the intraday chart we're looking at right now. I'll bring over the overall trend as well we've had since this nasty little bullish run up. We're going to go over the flow of the calls and puts for this week, and then I'm also going to bring over the Ortex data towards the end of the video. So if you want to stay tuned for that, just keep those eyes peeled. So, of course, we have our ultimatum resistance up here at 989 today. We caught that resistance, we caught that support at around 965, and then we fell under it. You know, it wasn't even only for BlackBerry. We had AMC, we had Jimmy, we had even MVIS. All four of those stocks and more took false breakdowns today. Uh, I'm not too sure if this was one of their last attempts to shake out the paper hands, if truly there is manipulation behind the scenes, or if the support for all of the stocks I just mentioned was actually lower than expected for all of those stocks, which I'm almost indefinitely sure it was the first case scenario. So without any further ado, we made this little symmetrical triangle. We just had another false breakout with these two candles, seeming like we're rejecting back into this range. So we could pop one way or another. I put supports in the bottom to prepare you guys for the worst. Even if we do pop under this, it's not a big deal whatsoever, but we still have support at around 972. A little bit under that, you got that 969 support. You even have that consolidation bounce right here uh, at around 966. And we still have the ultimatum support at 965. So if I go into the past month of trading activity, you can see we took a little bit of a tumble these last couple of days. We fell under the symmetrical triangle. Now I made sure to tell you and others we have the overall resistance at 11, we have the overall support at 965. Now the fact that we broke under it. It scared people. It shook people out. So unfortunately, when things like that happen, you have to give your trends time to play out. Now, this is an extreme test of conviction because usually you don't get a false breakdown, a false breakout as hefty as that. But the fact that it fell down under in the intraday and it immediately found its way right back up above that 965, took that reassuring bounce around that range too. It's just showing that this was indeed a false breakdown, also known as a bear trap. So nothing has changed. If we really do get this bounce and we continue to push, we are still in this 965 11 range of support. Um, this is not financial advice, but I do want to let you guys know, full disclosure, that I did pick up around three to four calls today at 959, and now I'm up almost 40% per call. So I just want you to know that it takes true conviction to be in the stocks that you love. You have to be able to see through the BS as well. And I'm hoping throughout this 57, 58 trading days straight of BlackBerry videos that I've been able to set you guys up to be able to see through the BS and to stay true to that conviction, you know? Uh, but without any further ado, we're going over the intraday chart. We went over the long-term trend. We just need to catch this bounce and continue to make a new trend or just uh, slowly but surely take those higher lows, higher lows until we break out above $11. This is going to be our overall resistance. So just know if we run up to 11 and reject again, nothing has changed whatsoever. Of course, it's getting neck to neck with bulls and bears. So it's only a matter of time before something ends up happening. So of course, with false tips like this, the big players, the short sellers, whoever is dragging the stock price down behind the scenes is getting what they want. Now, they can only get what they want for a matter of time if the true trend in the stock is bullish. Now, of course, we've been bearish for such a such a long time, but we were in a falling wedge. So as we all know, falling wedges almost always results in a bullish pop or at least a bullish breakout. Instead of a bullish breakout, we got the second best case scenario, which is just moving sideways. Buyers are now starting to meet the sellers at the same price or generally around the same price. So what's next? bearish we're starting to meet them we're getting this close to having a lick of some bullish pressure uh, we just need to catch this next dip and run back up to the same ranges of resistance with this rundown recently after we capped out at around 1062 we were kind of like hugging the range of resistance now this is where i kind of got a little bit timid on my videos because people were just throwing buy orders around this range i get it you want to catch that breakout formation but based off a of ta alone you're supposed to get at least three bounces on each support and resistance so i was expecting red the shrewd gang was expecting red a lot of people in blackberry were expecting red but the majority wasn't we had about one two three for false breakouts because people are throwing in dry powder at a place that shouldn't even be bought at. You have to accept the TA in the stocks. And if you're trying to fight the TA, generally it could work out in your case scenario, but it almost never does. You have to accept the TA, play the trend so you can see what's coming next and be able to see through the BS. Without any further ado though, we went over the overall trend, the intraday. So let's just go ahead and bring over the flow of the calls and puts so we can get into the retailer's mindsets and some of the big whales in the secondary market behind the scene. So this is extremely interesting to me because of course, if I were to bring the short sellers over, uh, we could get into their mindset, the bears mindset. But at the same time, when it comes to retailers, there's also bears and bulls. So 
we got to bring the calls and the puts in the secondary market to see what people are generally betting on throughout this week. We have this week's expiration next week and it just falls down from there. So we're only going to take it one week at a time. So we're only going to break it down into the first week. Of course, this is the volume. So this is going to be on a daily basis. You're getting around 12,000 calls picked up today and you're getting around 990 puts picked up today. But we're not going to really pay attention to that because we want to break it down into the actual open interest. The amount of calls in total, the amount of puts in total that are open right now that are going to expire at 820. So of course, these can be picked up two, three weeks ago, month ago, if you will. Um, and there'll still be open interest for the expiration of 820. So if you're following me, let's just go ahead and break this down into percentage wise. So you can see there was around 32% puts for this week and then around 68% calls for the week. So of course, throughout this week, there's more bullish than bearish. It seems like every week it's like this so far. So retailers are definitely expecting some bullish movements ahead. All right. And then as you can see in the short sellers mindset, Today in specific, they're doing nothing. Jack squat, if you will. There's just as much returned shares as there is borrowed shares. So that net difference is going to be jack squat. That short interest percentage change is going to be jack squat. What I'm paying attention to in totality is going to be this current short interest percentage. You see that 11.2%. That's pretty high for BlackBerry. I mean, it's been a lot higher in the past. It's been a lot lower in the past as well. But if I bring the estimated short interest percentage, which is this number over here, you can see it's just flown these past couple of days and it makes you scratch your brain because we went from 5% to 11% in a matter of one week of activity. If you bring the shares on loan over, this is exactly why. Um, short sellers were just running away from BlackBerry. You know, one, they were either sick and tired of it or two, they made their gains. They shorted it in mass amounts up here when we were touching around $20, $19, $18 once again. So the ones that did catch it up this high made their green, made their money, if you will. So they covered, of course, that's what short sellers do. But the difference is, is when all of them covered, there was around 19, 18 million shares on loan still left in the float. So it made me scratch my brain. I'm like, we're touching 960, 950. It doesn't seem like we're going to fall much more. There's not really too many short sellers picking up any more short shares. But then we caught that little pop once again to around $11, maybe 1080, if you will. So short sellers did one of two things. Either they were going to continue to cover and run away from BlackBerry or two, they were going to chase the price up. They average up like we average down. And that seems like that's exactly what happened. Whoever was stuck still in BlackBerry's float to this day doubled down on that day when we popped up to a little bit. Now, this isn't even that major. You know, if we have a natural bullish run up to 11, even 1050, if you will, they're already out of the money. In fact, they could be already out of the money right now. They're just kind of betting on the retailers mindsets and hoping that we can lose our conviction or lose some volume throughout the days and weeks to come. Personally, I don't see that happening. I've been making videos for over two months straight on this stock and everything behind the scenes and in the price action is just playing out beautifully for another push ahead. Long-term consolidation is terrible. I hate it. I really do, you know, but if you have to get that long-term position, it's only a matter of time before that reversal ends up coming into play and you'll be up a lot higher in dollar amount, especially if it's your long-term stock. Nobody should let some consolidation, nonetheless, a falling wedge formation be the reason for them to sell out. I saw this, the Shrew Gang saw this, so what did we do? Blackberries are long-term stock. We have to get up that position. Now, this is not a financial advice. In all totality, if you missed any sort of buys these last three or four days, you're going to be punching the air in the near future. As you can see, short sellers are not really shorting it once again. They doubled down and they just stopped. You know, if the stock was going to continue to fall, short sellers would be on this like white on rice. White on rice, man, they would, but you don't see it in the data. In fact, we're at 32 million shares on loan. This is around the lowest we've ever seen it in BlackBerry's float since the end of 2019. Same thing with utilization. We are reaching up into this 14% range, but if you go back, the lowest we've ever been since the end of 2019 is 14.6. So still the lowest you've ever seen it since 2019. Short sellers are running away from BlackBerry. And the only th reason that I can give for that is because BlackBerry has been due for a valuation upgrade. I mean, it really has. It's not a phone business anymore, man. Short sellers know this. Retailers know this. And guess what? Day by day by day by day, financial media is starting to know it too. I mean, I've been seeing news articles a lot for BlackBerry. I remember throughout this long-term consolidation, this little BlackBerry limited news that I'm on right now was completely empty. If you looked up BlackBerry news on the internet, it was all bearish. It's starting to play out, my friends, slowly but surely, man. If you're here to this day and you still have that conviction, I seriously give you props, man. Not too many people are able to trade like you. Nonetheless, there's a lot of new people, not a lot of new investors in the Shrewd Gang, so it's always good to start off in the beginning with a strong conviction. It, almost everybody, almost every new investor has at least one to two learning experiences in the market. 
The reason I'm here, the reason the Shrew Gang is here is so we can avoid from all retailers catching that. You can smarten up and you don't have to get a learning experience, but of course everybody does. So Shrew Gang, I'm gonna give you some fist bumps, man. We've been in this thing for the long run, the long haul, and it's playing out perfectly. If you are watching as well, if you can like, share, subscribe, hit that bell as well. It'll help me out more than you can even imagine. It'll help you out too, man, for real. The more people that hop into the videos, hop into the streams as well, they'll start seeing the massive growth potential behind BlackBerry at such a cheap price. So, of course, y'all do you, man. I'm not going to tell you to do something you don't want to do. If you're not a part of the Shrew Gang, all you got to do is hit that subscribe button. Nonetheless, though, I'll catch y'all, boy. Stay safe out there as well so I can see you tomorrow. Peace out. Uh... Shrew Gang.